In this module, we aim to provide you with both theoretical knowledge and practical skills. You'll learn how to deploy and manage databases in containerized environments using Podman. We'll cover various aspects, including the importance of logs, using Podman Inspect, managing variables in container environments, and conclude with a hands-on demonstration to reinforce your learning. Logs are an essential part of managing containerized applications. They help us debug issues, monitor performance, and ensure security. There are several reasons why logs are important, for debugging and troubleshooting, operational monitoring, audit and compliance, and selective log viewing. Logs provide access to the standard output and error output of containers. This helps developers and operators quickly identify and resolve issues by analyzing error messages and understanding the behavior of applications in different environments. Operational monitoring relies heavily on logs to assess the health and performance of systems. Logs allow for real-time or historical examination of container activity, which is vital for ensuring smooth operation of services. In environments where compliance and auditing are necessary, logs serve as an immutable record of application behavior and system access. This information is crucial for audits and compliance reports. Selective log viewing allows users to tailor log output to their specific needs. You can view logs from a particular time frame, follow log output in real time, or display only the most recent log entries. Here are some practical commands for interacting with logs. These commands allow you to specify a container by name, add timestamps, filter logs by keywords, and more. Podman events provide insight into what's happening within the Podman environment at the system level. They report events such as container creation, destruction, starts, stops, and restarts, which are useful for debugging, understanding behavior, automation, and auditing. There are various types of events you can monitor, container events, image events, system events, volume events, and pod events. Each type provides specific information about the activities within your containerized environment. These practical commands allow you to start a continuous stream of events, filter them by type or container, and listen to events from a specific time or for a set period. Next, we'll discuss how to use Podman Inspect to retrieve detailed information about containers and images. Podman Inspect can be used to inspect images, containers, network configurations, and volumes. This includes details like layers, tags, size, configuration, state, and more. Using Podman Inspect gives you a comprehensive overview of the configuration and state of your containers and images. It's invaluable for debugging and managing storage and network configurations. Here are some practical commands for using Podman Inspect. You can specify a container or image name, inspect networks and volumes, and filter output for specific information using the JQ command. Variables are crucial for configuring container environments. They make applications more dynamic and flexible. Variables offer several benefits, configuration flexibility, environment separation, security, simplicity, and easier debugging and troubleshooting. Variables allow you to pass configuration settings to your applications, enabling you to alter their behavior without needing to create a new container image. Variables help provide environment-specific configurations, promoting consistency across testing, production, and development environments. Using variables to pass sensitive information at runtime is more secure than including it in container images or source code. Variables simplify deployment and management by allowing you to adjust runtime behavior easily.
Variables make it easy to enable debugging modes or increase logging verbosity without changing the container code or rebuilding the image. Use podman run command with the E option for environmental variables. An example is shown in the slide that passes the variable DB user as test user and variable DB password as test database when the container is created. Hello and welcome to a demonstration on using Podman to run a MariaDB container. In this demo, we'll explore the process of pulling an image, running the container, and troubleshooting common issues that may arise. Throughout this demo, we'll walk through the steps to get a MariaDB container up and running using Podman. Let's start by searching for available MariaDB images using the Podman search command. This step helps us identify potential images to use for our demonstration. As you can see, there are several images available. We can filter the results to find a specific image that suits our needs. For this demonstration, we'll use the image from the Fedora project repository. Now that we've selected an image, let's pull it from the registry using the podman pull command. This command downloads the image from the registry and stores it locally on our system. Depending on the size of the image, this process may take a few seconds or several minutes. In our case, the image is relatively small, so it should download quickly. Before we run the container, let's verify that the image has been successfully pulled using the podman images command. This command lists all the images that are currently available on our system. As expected, our MariaDB image is now listed. Now it's time to run the MariaDB container. We'll use the podman run command and specify the name of the container as mydb and the desired image. The D flag tells podman to run the container in detached mode, which means it will run in the background. Let's verify the status of the container using the podman ps command. As expected, the container is not running. Let's list stopped containers using podman PSA. This command shows us all containers, including those that are stopped or exited. By inspecting the container logs using podman logs mydb, we discover that the container failed to start because it requires environment variables mysql underscore user, mysql underscore password, and mysql underscore database to be set. This is a common issue that can occur when running a MariaDB container. To determine the required syntax for passing environment variables, we inspect the image using the podman image inspect command and then piping it through the jq utility to extract the relevant information. This shows us that the variables need to be passed using the e flag. Now that we understand the required syntax, let's delete the previously failed container using the podman container rm command. We'll then rerun the container with the required environment variables set using the e flag. Let's verify that the container is now running using the podman ps command. As expected, our container is now running in the background.
That concludes our demonstration on using Podman to run a MariaDB container. We've walked through the process of searching for images, pulling an image, running a container, and troubleshooting common issues. By following these steps, you can run your own MariaDB container using Podman. Thanks for watching.